Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric back again with another video. And in this video, we are doing the Curvy Country Road Test again. So if you haven't seen this playlist, go over to my channel or I'll leave a link down in the description. So for this Curvy Country Road Test, we are running software version 2019.32.12.2. Now, why I'm doing this test again, if you guys are an avid follower of my channel, I've already done this curvy country road test with this update, and it was successful, meaning it did pass through the test, and it was able to handle all the curves as we expected. Now, what's gonna be different about this one is, I'm gonna actually turn around and try to go in the reverse direction, reverse, reverse. which I haven't done before, and we're gonna see how the car handles those curves, in the opposite direction. So heading the opposite path of travel, like you see all these cars coming at me right now. Now, if you haven't seen this test before, this first section of the road is really easy. So as we get further down the road here through this little town, this is when it gets significantly harder. So I'm in autopilot the whole time right now. I'm sorry that the screen is difficult to see, but something that you can see is I'm using a scroll wheel to slow the car down manually because I want to turn the turn signal on here and I'm going to see if by turning the turn signal on, it will take this kind of veer to the right, this yield. I don't have uh, the navigation turned on or anything like that. Um, that is one of the points that I have to take over in this drive that I've done. So it's going to be interesting to see as future software versions come out um, when Tesla enables the ability for you to take that little turn back there. So heading through this town, I'm in autopilot right now, and we're coming up on this truck here, and I wanna see what it does, and it actually thinks that I'm behind the truck, so I push on the accelerator, and then it goes past the truck, although it's a little close on that right-hand side. But just by touching the accelerator, or pushing down on the accelerator, it was able to move past the truck without disengaging in autopilot. So pretty interesting there. Okay, so here is a section of the road that I was able to turn on last time, turn the autopilot on last time, and it did fail. So let's see that again here, because we have cars on the other side of the road, and it looks, okay, I need to take over. So <laughs> that was uh, interesting how there is a gap in the yellow line back there, and it does want to go on the other side of the road there, because it is a sharp right turn, although later on in the test, you're going to see turns that are more sharp than that. Now, part of the reason why I think it's failing here because the WL line has a big break, but that's just my theory. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. But it's definitely not a hard curve, like a, the most severe turn that we do in this test. So pretty interesting to see that. Now, I'm not counting that as one of the curves, so just so you guys are aware, because most of the time I'm not able to engage autopilot quick enough coming out of the town because there is a stop sign. So here's our mer first major left turn coming up and it does a great job, really smooth. And something that I noted in the last curvy country road test that is really cool that Tesla started doing is when the car recognizes a curve, it actually starts slowing down just like a human driver would approaching the curve, which is really cool. So we have a slight curve up here before we get to the blind left downward curve that's coming up here at this little T intersection. And it is able to make it. So let's go slow-mo for a second here. And we're able to see that the car takes over at the last second. Although I would have liked to see it slow down a little bit like I was just talking about but it still is able to successfully get past that. I do apologize again for the touch screen. It is bright and early in the morning and my GoPro is definitely having an issue um, where it whites out the screen. But again, overall, I'm very impressed with how Autopilot's able to handle this smaller, very curvy kind of backcountry road uh, because Autopilot currently is not designed for this. This is something that Tesla's working on. It's designed for the highway but it will work on this road. And they have it's clear to me that they've made a lot of great improvements on this road too. 
So here, the car is slowing down, as you can see, as it approaches a curve, and it is able to recognize that there is a curve, which is something that is really cool. In previous software versions, it would take curves at almost full speed, which was very nerve-wracking for a human sitting behind the wheel. You can see there how it's slightly slowed down around the curve, and we have another difficult curve coming up here. You can see it straight ahead, and it's actually going to go to the left here and down a little bit, which makes it really difficult for the computers to see. You saw it got a little bit close to that white line over there, but it was able to correct itself and get back into the center of the lane. So pretty impressive there. Again, this autopilot system is designed for highway use, so it's really impressive that it's able to handle these curves. And in this version 10 update was the first time I noticed that it was actually slowing down or identifying curves and then would slow down to take the curve more comfortably for the passengers riding in the car. So here we have another curve to the left, the last curve of this test, and it did a great job. It engaged autopilot, autopilot stayed the same. The only time that autopilot disengaged was this first curve here, which I'm not counting in the test because typically I can't engage it fast enough. So this was the only close call that I had to take over, but now I wanna turn the car around and go the opposite direction or the direction that we just came from. And so we're going to take all the curves in the reverse direction. So not a good start to this reverse direction test. So we did start to get a little too close for comfort to this huge school bus coming around the curve. Now you can see my hand on the wheel. I have complete tension ready to take over immediately and which I do have to take over because it starts to get a little too close to that school bus for me. Now, just like Tesla recommends, keep your hands on the wheel at all times to be safe, and I wouldn't recommend trying what I do here in my videos. The curve we're approaching, take a look at what we just did, in the, so it went sloping up to the right, so now we're gonna go down and to the left. It is really smooth, so it does slow down a little bit approaching that curve, you can see here, I tweaked the settings a little bit on the video so you can see the speedometer. And we're going 32 down to 31. Really smooth, feels like someone else is driving the car. Someone meaning like a human is driving the car versus previous software versions, previous autopilot versions have seemed more like a robot driving the car. Now here it gets a little tight on that left hand side Although I don't have to take over, I would have liked to see it more in the center of the lane so it wasn't so close to that one side. Now we have another big curve coming up here and it did maintain the lane position a lot better than some of those previous curves. But you can see here that it did actually slow down. I have the speedometer or the max speed set to 40 miles per hour. So it did slow down all the way to 33. And I love how it's able to identify these bigger curves and slow the car down because that as the driver makes me feel a lot more safe in the car while autopilot is on. And that's gonna be really important as we move towards a full self-driving future in that the driver, me, is just gonna be monitoring the system while it's taking these roads. And we're at 40 right here going around the curve, not a severe curve at all, but it did slow down still just a hair. So as we get to this little blind turn, this intersection here, we're gonna see what the car does, and I don't have to take over, although just like that previous curve, it does get a little too close to that left-hand side for me. I would have liked to seen it closer in or closer to the middle of the lane versus hugging that double yellow line, I would have, you know, me as a driver, it makes me a little bit nervous and I'm ready to take over immediately, uh, of course, but I would have liked to see it maintain that center lane position, although didn't have to take over because it wasn't getting close enough like you saw with that school bus. That was just a little too much for me. So as we head back into this little town here, we have a couple of tight curves 
and the autopilot does slow down significantly. You can see I'm down to 29 miles per hour, down from it's set to 40 as a max speed. So it does slow down significantly. Here it slowed down 11 miles per hour just to take this curve really smooth. So I think part of the reason why it's getting close to that double yellow line or not maintaining the center lane position is because it's not able to identify all the curves or see that all the curves are as significant and it doesn't slow down enough on all the curves. So we do hit that traffic here before the first time I had to take over and that was for the curve that I didn't really count in the test and it had that gap in the yellow line. So let's take that and see what happens going the opposite direction. So you can see here, it the blue lines on the center display do see it until it doesn't see it. So <laughs> it was going good and it did see the curves and it was gonna follow the cars until all of a sudden it thought it needed to go straight. So a little bit uh, less dramatic than last time where we have other cars on the opposite side of the road and it tries to take the other side of the road. So we have a stop sign there and we engage autopilot through this town but then we have another left hand turn to continue on before we re-engage autopilot again. Now this side of the road is very smooth in both directions. I will say the curves are a lot less severe. They're more of a flowing curve versus some of the more severe curves that we've seen on the other side of the town. So that's why this part of the road is pretty solid and there is no reason for me to take over whatsoever, not to mention that the lane position of the car stays very constant throughout the entire section of this road. So overall, yes, there is a couple little things, room for improvement, such as maintaining the center lane position around some curves so we don't have to take over, and there is some great things that have been improved upon over the last software updates, just like this slowing down around some curves that it's able to identify. I'm really interested to see how this will perform when my car does get the 3.0 hardware computer installed. How it will be different if it'll be able to make decisions faster. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I wanna give a huge shout out to our man of men, Akarama Tool and Nicola Pro for supporting this channel over on Patreon. Click the link down below to support this channel. Thank you guys so much. Please share this video with a friend. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one.